hey guys welcome back to power apps learning channel today we are going to discuss about how we can save the the flow running instance url in your record itself so that you can easily uh, locate that particular instance whenever it's needed so before getting into the details let me just show you something this is a sharepoint 2010 version so in the, the SharePoint 2010, 2013, 16 versions, we were easily able to locate the running instance of the workflow because we were using the SharePoint design workflow. So whenever you go to the list or library, select that record, click on workflow, you were able to locate the, the workflow instance. What, what is happening with that instance? You were able to locate the logs, task, and all that. Now with the SharePoint online, we are using the Power Automate Flows, which is an independent application, of course, in the cloud. And there is no direct connection. So you don't find the, the connection or the details in the SharePoint list itself for that particular flow, which is running for the record. So here in this video, we are going to uh, generate or identify or get the URL of the flow uh, running instance whichever the flow is running for this particular record we are going to store it in the record itself so that you can easily open the running instance of the flow and track it or, or troubleshoot it if, if something goes wrong you can troubleshoot it easily for that particular record now why do we need this why do we need to uh, locate such a running instances of the flow for a particular record there might be 100 different scenarios. So user might, end user might come to you as admin or IT person saying my process is stuck. There are no updates for for a long time. User might want to cancel the approval process. So you, you need to go ahead. You need to go and find out that particular instance, cancel that running flow. User might want to reassign the modern approval if you are using the modern approvals user might want to reassign it to someone else so you have to cancel the flow start over again assign it to someone else user might want to skip skip the approval as well uh, or something went wrong and user just want to uh, delete that record and start over again so there could be any scenario where the user might want to cancel the running current current running instance of the flow so in that case, you have to first identify or uh, locate that particular instance. If you have thousands of items, so thousands of flow instances will be running in the behind. So what you need to do is, I mean, as a manual solution, what you'll be looking at is when that item was modified, when that item was created. So go to the go to that particular flow, uh, go to the all runs. Of course, and the, another limitation here is you'll, you'll be having just 30 days run history over here you won't be able to get the running instance of the flow before 30 days with the sharepoint design of workflow it was fine i mean you were able to locate it doesn't matter if it is within 30 days or beyond the previous 30 days now as i said you will be looking at when the item was modified or created and you'll be looking at looking at the exact time okay for example okay this this particular instance open it and see if this is the one which is we are referring to the rec record and then see why it failed what happened what went wrong where is it now why is it stuck and all that so this is kind of a bit uh, tedious and difficult job when you have hundreds and thousands of items and thousands of instances running so to avoid that why can't we just store the current running instance whatever the flow is running for a specific record let's say you have this list and whenever you create a record the flow will start the approval process will start uh, if there is sequential approval process where it is going through one after another the flow will wait till the user respond back so you have a running instance which may go for few days week a month as well so you need to know what instance is running for this particular record so why why can't we just get that url and store it here yeah we can do that that's what we'll be looking at uh, now so to do that you have to first get the details of the instance which is running so let's switch back to the flow and let me just edit this flow 
what we are going to do now is we'll be there, there is a function called workflow function let me just show you so i'll just use the compose action just to show the data data here and if you go to expression inside this there's a function called workflow function and so if you see this the function provides you the details for the workflow itself at runtime okay so just click on ok and save it we'll just go ahead and add the record or we'll just rerun the existing instance what i'll do i'll just open any one of it and resubmit it just to see what happens and what that workflow function returns back so when I open this, this is the output of it. So if I just copy this and put it in a notepad. So what it returns is the ID of the workflow, the flow name that, that is, this is the flow ID actually. It, it, it stores the value in the name field. This is the flow ID. Then you have the flow display name. You have the environment ID as well. This is my default environment. That's why you, this is appended with the default. Then you have the run detail. Now this is a flow ID. This is a flow display name, environment name and the run. So you have the run instance ID as well, which is stored here, which is a uh, name. Okay. Now if I show you, let's just go back so here. If you see this URL, what we have done now, we are looking at the run instance, which is already successfully done. Okay, this is successfully ran already. Now, when you look at the URL, how this URL is generated, it contains the, the flow.microsoft.com and the region wherever your tenant belongs. You have this fixed part, which is manage environments. Then you have the environment ID here, then flows, then you have the flow id here runs and then run id so this way you will be able to get the uh, flow running flow instance run url okay so what what we need the dynamic part what is the dynamic part is the environment id of course if you have just one environment you can just hard code it or if you have multiple environments you can get it dynamically as well as i said here is the the environment id which is this you can get it dynamically as well. This is the environment ID. This is the flow ID, which is here. You can see it here. This is the same ID. And you have run, which is run ID here. So there are three parts of this URL, which we can feel uh, or get through the workflow function dynamically. And we will combine it. We will concatenate and generate this URL. And we'll store this URL in the record back so that you can just access it directly. So what we'll be doing now, so as you see here, we are getting all these details, the environment ID, flow ID, and the run ID. Let's just compose, do another compose and combine it. So how we can, how we can access that particular, uh, those particular details is, you just go to expressions, uh, here it is, okay workflow dot run this will give you this one and then the name so dot name now if you put this i hope it's i'm not wrong here let me just uh, save this okay let's just do another let's add another compose here this will give me the run id run id let me add another action here Let's get the flow ID now. Again, go to expression. And where will we get it? It's under the, this is here directly. Okay, so it's workflow.name. Put it here. This will give me the flow ID, okay? And let's just save it and rerun it again. 
go back just open the another instance and just click on resubmit okay this is our workflow function output and we have tried to read the name and this is a run id you can see it here this is the one the name and with the flow id you will be able to get the flow id so what i have done here is we have extracted the output of the flow workflow function with with this simple uh, tags workflow dot run dot name this will give you the run id workflow dot name this will give you the flow id and similarly we'll be able to get the environment name as well one environment id as well then the next job is just to concatenate together of course here uh, this one you can depending on your region uh, wherever your tenant is registered this will change rest will remain same now i've already done that let me just uh, get it from here Let's just delete all these actions. We don't need it. Delete it. Okay. Just get it here. And this is what it is. Just a concatenate concat function with the flow.microsoft.com manage environments, and then you have workflow.tags.environment name. This will give you the the environment ID, then you have flows, then workflow.name runs, workflow.run.name. This will generate the running flow instance URL. Now we have the running flow instance URL. Now next job is we have to store it in the record, the record on which this flow had triggered. Now you have a record, you have the list on the created event, this flow get triggered you generate the URL, you have to store it back in the same item. So you have to avoid the looping, re-triggering of the flow again. So how do we do that? That's what we are going to look now. So let me just get these records, so get these actions up. I'll just delete this, I don't need it anymore. And delete this also. So what, what I'm going to do now is we will be using the trigger condition here. I have already added a trigger condition here. This trigger condition says run it on specific condition only. Whenever a specific item is having specific value, then only run it, otherwise don't run it. So what I have done is I have created a column. Let me just show you that column here. Let's just go to the list setting. and there is a column called run flow it's just s or no column now this particular is a flag you can say this particular column uh, by default it will be set to yes and whenever i am updating this particular record uh, with and there is also other column where we will be storing the workflow uh, instance URL, which is simple again, straightforward uh, flow instance URL hyperlink call. Okay, so whenever the flow get triggered, we will get, we will get the instance URL, and we will update the same item. Okay, we'll update the same item with first of all, you have to set the run flow as no. And just put the output, whatever output you are getting through this above compose action, the instance URL, just store it in the hyperlink column. Now what will happen? This will store the hyperlink, uh, the running flow instance URL in this particular column. And it will also make sure that the flow will not get triggered itself because we are updating it, but we are setting it to no. Now how we are avoiding it, just go to the setting and trigger conditions. So I'll just copy it and put it here. So what this does is forget about this uh, other query. I'm just doing and with some other column, other condition. So what it does is it checks 
whether the run flow is true or s okay so this is s no column that's why i had to provide it true or false so whenever it is true then only the flow will run when it is false the flow will not get triggered that's how we will be avoiding the re-triggering of or self-triggering of the flow so that it doesn't go into indefinite calls and we will be able to update the same record with the, the information whatever we want to store into it now we have the instance url which is running we have stored it in the record and then then whatever business logic you have the flow might keep running for next few days and after like 10 15 days the user might come to you boss this is not working so how do you how do you find it how do you get the instance url so just go back uh, let me just see if i have uh, i have any record saved otherwise we'll just create a record and we will see if the instance url gets saved correctly or not so i'm just creating new item we'll be just storing it uh, we'll just saving this particular record and this will trigger the flow and let's say okay this is just a tenant details and let's just save it okay now this should trigger the flow and the flow will get triggered let me just see here you can see that the flow is running now and let's just go back okay first of all let's see what's happening here whether it is updating our record with the flow instance url or not and at the same time let's just go back and see here okay this was our record and as i said we have uh, set the run flow to false and there is a flow instance url so let me just go back here this is our running flow instance. I'll just go back and let's just, this is the record. And what I'll do, I'll just click on it. Now, let's say if the user comes to you saying, I want to cancel the flow, the flow is not working, something is wrong and all that. So what you need to do is just come here, click on this particular link and it will open the running instance of the flow for that particular record. So you don't need to, go to the run history find it and all that so you directly uh, you are directly on the running instance which is running for that particular record you can now see and troubleshoot it you can cancel it you can resubmit whatever you wanted to do you can do it now okay so that that that's how uh, you will be able to save the running flow instance and it will really help because if you have the organization you are the you are the organization with more than 500 or 1000 employees and you have so many lists and libraries flows running of course i understand uh, there there will be scenarios where the flows might be failing something is going wrong user want to cancel it you want to user want to reassign it uh, user wants to delete the record and create it again so you, you need to know which instance is running for which record. So this is a straightforward solution which you can easily go to that record, just search the record and you will be able to find the URL of the instance which is running for that record. Well, let's just go back to the presentation. Yeah, that's what we did. You, we used the workflow function which will give you the, the environment ID the flow id and the run id you generate the url you save the url in the hyperlink column in, in your record itself and try to avoid of course you have to avoid not try you must do this otherwise it will loop self trigger so use the trigger conditions uh, with the flag column and it will uh, stop or it will avoid the looping of the flow itself yeah that's all we have in this video i hope this will help you guys thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for another video soon